Hello and welcome to our podcast, Connecting and Supporting Others. I am Mira Reis and I am delighted to have you here with us. Enjoy! I am very pleased to welcome our guest today. He is a member of our Academy of Holistic Freedom. He is a coach. Bill Comrade, I am very happy to having you here with us. Thank you, Myra, very much for uh, having me on this on this interview. It's a great pleasure to be your guest and to share what I have to share with your with your tribe. Thank you very much. I would like you to ask you, could you be so kind and share your story with us, please? Well, I'll be really happy to do so. Uh, I'm Coach Red. I'm from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, from Southern Europe. I help smokers and people impacted by smoking to crush the grip of nicotine and break the chains of addiction. Uh, well, let me tell you my brief, brief, uh, briefly my biography, my life story, actually. Uh, when I was six years old, civil war broke out here in Bosnia. Overnight, me and my family, we were refugees and have, we have to uh, flee to find, to escape from death and destruction. Uh, after some time, uh, my town became just safe enough to live in, and we returned. And uh, uh, we did. We 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 were living uh, every day under constant threat of bomb shells. Uh, but uh, we went to school and uh, and 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 we lived our life the best way we could. Uh, we often heard hear the whistles over our bombs uh, over our head of the bomb shells, but. Um, uh, we lived the best way we could, and uh, we we couldn't we we couldn't know the long term effects of this experience on us. Uh, eventually, I went. To, I finished school and went to university. I studied economics, and uh, it felt really good. I liked the economics, but uh, that's when I first start to feel slow, but in a low but increasing state of anxiety. Uh, I started smoking with a friend. It felt good. I fit in with the people, and for a few bucks, we could uh, smoke cigarettes and smoke and uh, and uh, and drink coffee all day. Because as a student, we we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, the the pray, uh, the lack of oxygen to my brain brain helped with the increasing anxiety, and I smoked a little more. Uh, I finished university, and then I was hit with the reality of life. I had to search i was in a constant search for job and uh, all i had was that and smoking and i smoke even more eventually i secured a secured the job of uh, tech uh, of a government a government uh, officer i work in tax administration in my country and uh, it was still a job i had a constant um, a regular payment and stuff but uh, there was no uh, professional growth it was unfulfilling worse uh, the, in the ex-communist country, the job uh, 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 that, uh, uh, that type of work, you have bosses who are bosses due to political support, not uh, not uh, their professional capabilities. And my boss was the example of that. And uh, I had my share of uh, abuse from him, him uh, each day. And that even made things worse. I was in a my anxiety grew, my depression grew, and my smoking and drinking increased even more. A few, few years later, my country was uh, hit with a great national disaster that affected the whole population. And after that, uh, my family suffered a great family loss. And it, that didn't help me either. And uh, I drink more, I smoke more. And one moment I told myself, you know, I lived through the war. I will live through this. I asked for medical guidance and uh, I was diagnosed with uh, clinical depression and I got my uh, guidance from my doctor. And that's when I learned the uh, tools that will affect my life forever. Uh, I learned the tools of cognitive behavior therapy and neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, CBT and NLP. Uh, still fighting with, uh, I was getting better, but still fighting with uh, clinical depression. I raised my self-medication with cigarettes uh, even more. I was uh, uh, even more. And uh, one day I, at the lowest point with cigarette, I had uh, enough 
money for uh, two days of cigarettes and food and I was uh, and two days of cigarettes and food and I wasn't getting paid in five and that's when I realized you know uh, I was actually I was actually uh, considering uh, not eating so I could smoke and since being the economist, I calculated that I was smoking one cigarette every 24 minutes. And I said, and then when I realized I'm a slave to nicotine and this got to stop. And I learned, and I learned all these tools and I, and I use all these tools that I have from neuro-linguistic programming and cognitive behavioral therapy. And I crushed the grip of nicotine and I broke in the chains of addiction. And, uh, Ever since that, I'm living the, the life of a non-smokers, the lion's life that I call it. And I'll be, I'm happy to be anyone's guide who, who needs help to stop smoking at, and crush the grip of nicotine and break the chains of addiction. And that's it. Okay. Thank you for sharing your story. It was very touching. To be honest, I do love when people can help others with the experiences which they had before, because it's it's totally different when you have your own experiences and I can see that you were very deep addicted to the nicotine. Maybe there are people who are less addicted how you are and you can deep, deep understand them and you can really help them. So it's, I think it's great decision not to keep your secrets for yourself, but to share it with others. Yeah. And well, now, I believe, sorry. I believe by helping others, we are helping ourselves. Uh, uh, when I, I, I didn't repeat this story for a long time and, you know, just like things coming back from the past, you know, and then you realize you are here, you're alive. And uh, uh, what I didn't mention, and, uh, the, every addict, every, it doesn't matter, you're addicted to substance or certain behaviors or, 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 or approvals or something. Uh, there's always that little voice that screams at you every day. Do that, do that, take cigarette, take cigarette, uh, go go, you know, kiss, kiss ass somebody and stuff, you know. There's so many behaviors that we are, not, are not helping to us. Uh, and what people are, are lacking to is knowledge to address those, that, that voice, that little voice that screams. Often that voice doesn't have a, a sound, a color of sound. And um, sometimes it's necessary that we give that color that the sound that we can recognize it and part of what i do is uh, helping people identify that sound to become friend of him to understand it to gently you know with aikido moves you know make it work for you <laughs> okay. yeah, it's great actually uh, i do believe that it's very important to accept everything what's going on in our life we can't reject it because when the reject is going deep inside is making more harm for us Actually, it's, it's easy to accept when we are happy, when we have what we want, but it's not negative. so easy to accept what we call like negative. For me, negative is actually a lesson for us. What's, what's going on, we need to develop, you know, we need to do, uh, go from this step a little bit higher and realize that we are here to learn because when everything is going great, we don't develop, we stay where we are. So... This negativity is actually our great lessons, our friends, yeah. but it's not it's so push. easy to accept it. It's a push. It's yeah. a push. You know, you can you can ask yourself, uh, why is this happening to me? Exactly to me, you know, and uh, and just wither away and disappear from earth, you know. Or you can say to yourself, look, what is the message of this? What could I do different? You know. And that different is uh, leaving the comfort zone, and it can be stressful. But look, when you start working out, you know anyone who ever lifted weight, you know he felt pain and power in the same time. And you say, "Oh, this is good," but you don't, you don't, you know, you don't focus on pain. You focus on power that you get. Even in reality, when you're working out, you actually you actually doing destruction of your muscles. But what happens after that destruction is rebuilding. You know, you start growing. You know and yeah yeah definitely okay so now we can move to other questions so can you tell us can you share with us what is your true calling your mission you said some stuff but maybe you can go a little bit deeper what is your mission my mission is to create smoke free world in the, that's a really general state statement uh what is beneath that is uh from my personal experience i figured out that uh, smoking 
is uh, that addiction to smoking was actually addiction to covering up your uh, insecurities, you know. Uh, and that insecurity is that uh, basically that little voice in your my head was saying to me, you're not worth a better life. You know, look at how these people live. You know, you have to look wealthy and rich to be accepted into this society. Of course, that was a lie, you know. Uh, people don't look at people through that lenses. You know, we all have our own eye eyeglasses that we look world with. And my belief was that uh, in order to be accepted from people is to look rich, look wealthy. You know, you couldn't find, there was a belief that all women uh, like uh, expenses present and you know I was actually fishing you know by by believing that I'm looking looking uh, rich now that was my belief as a teenage boy when I first started smoking with 15 you know when uh, eventually you forgot about that feeling you know consciously you don't remember that uh, but subconsciously that continued to live so my belief was to uh, I'm smoking because uh, uh, I can burn money. That can, that's how you can translate that. It, it wasn't conscious, yeah. conscious thinking, but it was underneath. When I was, uh, when I became aware of that, you know, things started to shift, you know. And then I realized that what I really want in life is uh, authority over my over my decisions and my and my beliefs. And that's the direct. Now that was my story. Every we all the different. And each smoker has his own, his own story. Why does he smoke? And I was moving to that direction. So in order to live in reality, you're not just becoming. Uh, I I don't want in reality. I don't just want to uh, create smoke-free world. I want to create a world that is free of insecurities because insecure people do a lot of stupid things in their life. You know. And by helping people to realize that to pursue their goal, that goal that I call the life of a non-smoker, where the name lions come from, um, uh, when I help client to to identify his true desires, to true 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 goal that they want to achieve, uh, that's when the change start to happen. And I just guide them to them. We all have resources to achieve success, to achieve change in our life. And all I have to do here is to help you take your hands, get you to that door and say, here you go. Wow. And Great. encourage you to walk through that. Yeah. Great. I do love it. And I, I like that you are using lion because lion is for me like, you know, like symbol for he's a king of the jungle and we are like when we are like lion we are king of, of our mind you know we, ca yes. we can we can create our life and stop to feel like victims but mm -hmm. realize that we only we are creating our life we are responsible for everything what's going on and, yes. this, and this insecurity what this actually is, it's like we don't have huge we don't have enough like self-esteem self-belief and when we realize who we really are, then in the real sense, we are amazing. We can do everything what we want. We, we can reconnect with the source of our wisdom. Everything can totally change. So, exactly. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. But it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it is simple, but it's yeah. not easy. Yeah. The problem is we are through our life and education, we are really learned that to get certain things you need to put the muscle to it put your mind to it and it's difficult it's, uh, sometimes it's even painful but it's painless painful only first time you do it you know and uh, and when people start to uh, hear something new like this stuff that we talk about you know it's holistic uh, yeah. freedoms uh, nlp cognitive behavior therapies you know it's all uh, subconsciously you know consciously we are saying okay that's cool but but subconsciously it's oh i have to do it again you know <laughs> start again you know it, it's even harder you know it's, you get to a certain age when you think you know everything and you just feel out and when you realize you know that you don't know everything that's when actually 
depression happens, you know. Those are really childish and stupid things, but, you know, uh, we grab ourselves like this, oh, man, we have to do it. But in, inside of us, there's a little three-year-old crying because he has to go to <laughs> kindergarten or something <laughs> like that, you know. But what parents do with that little crying child? They hug him, take comfort to it, and try to explain. Some parents start crying with them, you know. <laughs> Eventually, that kid goes to kindergarten and hopefully have a lot of fun, you know. And that's, uh, that's, I like speaking in metaphors and uh, I wasn't preparing this, but this, I have to write this down. <laughs> <It's also laughs> yes. okay. Yeah. okay, so now, image is that you have a superpower and mm -hmm. you can travel back in the time and you can meet younger version of yourself. What kind of advice you would give to yourself? Hmm. I will tell him first, uh, Red, just relax. Everything will be fine. Oh. Whatever is coming is coming. That will be, I'd like, uh, that will be my advice to him. Technical advices, uh, we would have a longer conversation to tell him everything. <laughs> Yeah, the younger Red was a dreamer, imaginer, uh, really living in a, how do you say it? Uh, when I was always, when I was alone drinking coffee in a bar, my head would be like a scene from Star Wars, you know, exploring space. Even you would see my face like this, but in my head, I would be in a, <laughs> I had Lord of the Rings movie before that Lord of the Rings forever recorded. And, uh, and uh, I would tell him, that's okay. Keep that imagination, keep feeding it. It's not bad, you know, love yourself. That's where your uniqueness is. And uh, regarding cigarettes, I don't know. If I didn't smoke, we wouldn't have this conversation. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't change person you know there, there's a saying i saw you know when you could live all over again where would you do what you what what mistake would you do then mistakes would you do then and i wouldn't try to change anything you know the my life that i had was the life that brought me here uh but i would say to him you know it's okay keep dreaming that's yeah. where your power is and yeah. that would be my advice to younger Red. Great. It's really, really, I love it because that's true. When we change some stuff in the uh, past time, it will be totally different. Yeah. And you yeah. had to go through all these experiences, which were not very easy sometimes, but have you said you wouldn't be here and you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have this uh, ability and experience and skills and gifts to share with others and support them to find their own way to go out from yeah. this insecurity. Yeah. yeah, me and the people from this part of the world, we had like some experience that I really wouldn't wish to my enemy, really wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, and uh, whenever I mention that, I do feel distress in my body. And uh, the fact is, it's not, it wasn't our fault, really. We just, it did happen, it can be changed, that's it. We're going to live what we live, okay? And, uh, you know, yeah. We just keep on living life. As my client quotes me all the time. Uh, I said that out of the blue. I didn't, I didn't think about it. I said uh, somewhere she read it. I, I, I can't even find it. I said somewhere, I wrote somewhere on Facebook, life doesn't have alternative. And that's her mantra now. And uh, I want to tell a short story from uh, other person. She's also a holistic coach. Um, she talked to me about uh, her father that was smoking like three packs of day. And um, when she was a young uh, girl, like uh, a child, uh, she got uh, really ill. And, uh, and uh, it was told to her father that she has to move out of the house or she has, or he has to move out of the house because he was smoking. And that day he stopped smoking. And she said to herself, you know, what was the, she asked herself, uh, what was her function of her, of her illness? What was that function of her illness? Why was she so sick? In a, she was so sick that she could, there was a risk of her dying. She couldn't breathe. And she figured out later, much years later, I was sick to save my father's life. 
And she said she's like 60 years old now and her father is like 80 something. Mm. If he was continuing to smoke three packs a day, who knows, maybe he would be over in pretty soon after that. Yeah. yeah. So okay. there's always something good out of everything. Yeah, definitely. I'm saying always each coin has two sides, you know. One is mm -hmm. like we, when we are deep in depression, we, we can see only this bad stuff, but always it's a positive what we can learn. You know, it, it, we, we can say time will show, time is the best uh, healer yes. you know, to how to realize this. Okay. All that, all that experience, especially depression and anxiety are just messages, are just flags from our subconscious mind saying us, you know, something needs to change. Yeah, yeah definitely. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and now the last question. You have other superpowers? We, we, I, I do believe we have them, but we don't know how to use them. So now you can be a rainmaker. Image is lovely sunny day, and you make rain, but sunny sun is still in the sky, and lovely huge rainbow is appearing in the sky. And you have this power to put your message, your advice for other people who are ready to receive. It means I look at this rainbow and I, and I receive your energy and I know, oh, this is important for me. What you will put in this rainbow? What message? My message would be practice self-love. Always feed yourself love. Whatever your flaws are, whatever you think your flaws are and your virtues, love them love each part of your body because each one of us is uh, we're living in this world and this world is like canva canvas and at each each uh, we are all pigments of color on that canvas. and without us this world would be a different place it wouldn't be what it is love yourself your unique capabilities your voice, your body, your, your, your spirit, your soul gives this world this amazing look, this amazing picture that we're living in. With everything good and bad that's happening, and trust me, there's more good than bad in this world. You are part of it. And without you, it would be different. Love yourself. Every, working, every, every, every morning you wake up, thank whatever you believe to thank yourself, thank God, thank anything for the way you are. Yeah. That would be my message to you all. Well, great. I think there is nothing to add to, be, you know, this was great finishing of our talk. I'm very grateful we had this talk and I hope we can have other in the future. So thank you. Have a lovely day, Rod. It was nice to talking to you. Thank okay. you very much. It was, okay. it was an honor to be your guest. Thank you. Bye-bye.